Girl, this is my sorry for 2004, and I ain't gonna mess up no more this year. I'ma take this one chance and make it real clear. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, sorry, in case I don't tell you. Tell you December, I'm sorry. It's like staying out all night. Hello and welcome to another perfect podcast. I'm your host, the king of YouTube, Pikachu All Spark. And this week, I didn't release any videos. So let's get right into it. SmackDown vs. Raw 2016. Yeah, SmackDown vs. Raw 2016, amazing podcast segment, you know, it's such an amazing segment that Wrestling With Regret decided to steal it from me, so that's how amazing my segment is, I'm so amazing, I inspire others to just completely rip off my segment. So, it is at this time I would like to make an announcement, this is the King of YouTube Championship. Awarded to who else? Me. Yes. This prestigious championship was created using only the highest grade of construction paper available. On the sides we see the YouTube logo. In the middle we see my logo itself. And underneath my logo we have the written words, the king of YouTube. So, I will now be displaying this throughout all my future SmackDown vs. Raw 2016s, whenever I play a WWE video game, or just in a video itself. Doesn't have to be even related to the wrestles. I can just carry it because it's an amazing championship and I deserve it don't I? <laughs> Genius. So let's start out Smackdown vs Raw 2016 with Raw. So Enzo and Cass start out the show. Enzo Amore is all, hey I was gonna fuck Sasha last week bitch but then and Big Cass is all Yo, Enzo, you were so gonna put your dick deep into her pussy. How you doing, bitch? Then, Chris Jericho comes out, and he's all, Hey, fuck you, you stupid idiot bitch. I am gonna fucking fuck you up. And I have Kevin Owens with me. Get out of here, Kevin. Kevin Owens comes out. Hey. I'm here and I'm gonna fuck you up, bitch. Then, a match happens. Now, I missed this part, so I'm not exactly sure what happened, but... Kevin and Chris won, question mark is what I have written down in my notes, so... I'm just gonna assume they won the segment. Whatever happened. Next, we see Sasha Banks and Mick Foley backstage, and he's saying, Hey, uh, okay, basically I forgot everything they said, but a match is made, Sasha versus Dana Brooke, and if Dana Brooke wins, then the match at SummerSlam is now a handicap match. You can guess what didn't happen. Next, Braun Strowman beats a jobber. Same as the last three, same as the last two weeks before it. Not much to say there. Next, Darren Young beats Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil versus Darren Young. Have we seen this before? Yes. Was it that good? Not really. They work better together than they do against each other. I'm not sure why WWE wants them to keep feuding. Like, they did it once a few years ago and now they're doing it again. Let's have something else happen, like, uh, 
a new fresh idea like, oh, I got it. Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. Genius. Next, Seth Rollins has an in-ring segment. He's all, hey, Finn Balor, fuck you, bitch. Finn Balor doesn't interrupt him as you would expect, though, so... The segment just ends with Seth Rollins talking. Next, we see a Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar segment. It's one of these backstage interview montage clip things. It's like three minutes long, each of them saying, Brock Lesnar said the fuck word at least once. Like, they censored it out, but hey, Brock, this is a PG show. You need to remember that. Next up... Cesaro beat Sheamus. I don't remember this match. It's the second week in a row it's happened, and I do not give a fuck. Next, Neville and Sin Cara beat the Dudley Boys. Ha ha ha. Here, I have to set the microphone down to give out my fucks. Fuck you, Sin Cara. Fuck you, Neville. I know. You're surprised that I would say fuck you, Neville, but he's very, very boring. Next, we have a Rusev and Lana wedding celebration segment. They're all, hey, we got married over the weekend or something. Sometime last week, over the week, they got married. And then Roman Reigns comes out and is all, hey, fuck you, bitch. Why wasn't I invited, bitch? Like... I was even invited to Sasha Banks' secret wedding, but I wasn't invited to yours, bitch. What the fuck? The segment ends with Lana being pushed into the cake because someone had to do it. Next up, we see Sasha Banks versus Dana Brooke. I missed the finish to this match, and then I heard on a podcast later, or I heard on a YouTube video later, it wasn't a podcast. Anyways, I heard that Sasha Banks won, so the SummerSlam match is the same. Title still on the line. Yay! Next up, we see a Finn Balor segment. He's got this video thing going on about where he gets his name from. And that was it. Next up, we see the club backstage. They make a million testicle jokes, because Vince loves testicle jokes. Whoa! Afterwards, we see Luke Gallows beat Kofi Kingston. It was a short match, so there's not much to say about it. After this, we see The Golden Truth and Scooby-Doo. Why? I mean, I know you guys have a movie to promote, but can't you just have Michael Cole do it? Have Michael Cole be all like, hey, there's a new Scooby-Doo film. It's coming out on... Actually, I think it's already out. Well, yeah, it's already out on DVD now. Go buy it. Like, if you just have him say that for, like, one minute at the announce table, it would spare us these weird Scooby-Doo and costume segments. Next, it's the main event. It's the final segment of the show. Or so you think. Mick Foley has invited Shane McMahon to Monday Night Raw. They're going to have a thing about Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar's appearances on each other's shows. Anyways, at the end of the segment, Rusev comes out and is all, Hey, I'm the champion, bitch! And they're all like, Yeah, okay, you're the champion, bitch. Fight Cesaro. Commercial break. After the commercial break, Rusev beats Cesaro and retains the United States Championship because did you really expect the championship to change hands? That would be like this championship changing this championship changing hands ever, which it won't. Woo! Look at how amazing my championship is. And that was Monday Night Raw. A severe downgrade from the last two weeks. What are you doing, WWE? This Raw could have been a lot better, and I know that, because on the first Raw after the, bland, after the brand split, it was amazing. Something truly great. Well, I guess you can't replicate greatness twice. Or, you can't replicate greatness, I guess. But you can certainly 
at least attempt to come the fuck on. Woo! And that was Monday Night Raw, so let's get into the next one. Smackdown Live. We begin the show with Randy Orton being interviewed. He's all, hey, Brock Lesnar is a fucking bitch. Then Alberto Del Rio interrupts saying, hey, fuck you, bitch. Fight me later, bitch. Randy's all, okay, bitch. Theme song. After the theme song, we see the Wyatt family in the ring. Dean Ambrose interrupts. Then, Dolph Ziggler comes out and attacks the Wyatts. After Dolph Ziggler attacks the Wyatts, Dean Ambrose joins him. They're on the attack. And I am think I think they stood tall at the end of the segment. I think they're the ones who won the segment. And yeah, that was that. Then, we see Dolph Ziggler. And Dean Ambrose backstage with Shane McMahon and Dan O'Brien. After that happens, the main event is made. Dean and Ziggler versus the Wyatts. Afterwards, American Alpha beats two jobbers. Why are we having American Alpha fight jobbers? We don't need to do this. Like, American Alpha are good enough. Like, they, they're better than this, basically is what I'm trying to say there. They are better than fighting jobbers. Like, fucking really. Next, all of the tag teams start beating each other up after the match. Ooh, tag team beat down. Ooh, bitch, 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 bitch. Next, we see The Miz being interviewed backstage. Yeah. I think this was the segment where they were on the Talking Smack set. I think it's also the pre-show set, but I don't know. Either way, yeah, this is where they do the after show. So that's something. So The Miz got interviewed. I can't remember what happened, although I... Like, I think The Miz and Maurice were together. Well, of course they were, because they're always together. And like... This is one thing where they were just about to fuck on the table. Pretty sure that was this segment. I thought that came later in the show, but I think it was this segment. But yes. Next, Becky Lynch versus Eva Marie. The match we were supposed to see last week is about to happen. Then all of a sudden, Eva Marie gets out her tits. Hooray! Hooray! But you can't see the nipples. Aww. She... So she goes to the back saying, Oh no, wardrobe malfunction. Ah. Becky Lynch is then interviewed saying, Hey, I'll fight whoever, bitch. I don't care who fights me, bitch. I'm gonna fight whoever the fuck comes out. So... Then, Alexa Bliss comes out. And... My reaction is... Finally. One thing I am disappointed in, however, is that Alexa Bliss did not do her choke thing. Like, she comes out, she finally makes the debut that I've been waiting at least two weeks for, and she didn't do that thing where she chokes somebody. Like, I guess it could be called a choke slam, but choke slams are where you raise somebody up and then down. Maybe she just does a weird choke slam. Everyone's got their own version of moves. People on the internet compare wrestlers' spears, although every spear I've seen basically looks the same. Maybe I just haven't been paying that much attention. Woo! So anyways, Alexa wins the match. It was not that long. Could have been longer, I guess. But hey... Good for her. She wins it on her birthday. Yay. Next up, Randy Orton versus Alberto Del Rio, according to my notes, apparently. The match ends in a DQ. I can't remember which person wins via DQ, but someone won via DQ. Next up, we see a Rhino and Heath Slater backstage segment. 
They're doing a comedic thing. It's supposed to be funny. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Next up, we have The Miz and Scooby-Doo having a segment. Scooby-Doo locks The Miz in the mystery machine, then steals his car. What the fuck, Scooby-Doo? What the fuck? Next. Okay, I've written down Wyatt family segment, but I cannot remember what the fuck happened. Next, we see Heath Slater backstage with Shane and Daniel. They're all, hey. Oh, Heath is all, hey, fuck you, bitch. Fuck SmackDown, bitch. Oh, I mean, fuck SmackDown Live, bitch. I'm out of here, bitch. And then Shane and Daniel are like, oh, guess we can't give him this contract then. When I'm... I think this is a terrible decision. Wait. Did I say Rhino beats Heath Slater? Because that's something that happened. Anyways, I think it was a terrible decision to have Heath lose and then not get the contract. Mainly because I kind of want to see this free agent thing end as soon as possible. It's not that great. Like, it's okay, but you know, there's only two shows to choose from. Like... You, you don't really have a lot you can do with this. You can do it for a few weeks, but, you know, after that, people are going to get tired of it. Then again, they did stretch the forming of the Golden Truth out for five months, so hey, anything's possible, right? Next, Carmella beats Natalia. Something I realized during Carmella's entrance, she's doing the Thugonomics John Cena bit. Like, what the fuck? Like, think about it, she was doing, like, rhymes, like, she was trying to rap, but, you know, doing it s the way John Cena used to do his rapping, you know? That's what she was doing. She was basically Thugonomics John Cena, the female version. So anyways, yes, this was a match that happened. Next we see a John Cena and AJ Styles segment. They're all saying bitch to each other, I'm assuming. I can't remember what happened during this segment. Fuck my memory. Next. We come back from commercial to see that Baron Corbin has beaten up Callisto backstage. Yes! 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 Cause fuck Callisto. And then finally, the main event. Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler beat the Wyatt family because of fucking course they did. So... That was SmackDown Live. Now which show won this week? I'm gonna have to say SmackDown Live. I was more entertained by it, and yeah, like, Raw seemed like it was going on forever this week, and SmackDown Live, I enjoyed just about every second of, so SmackDown Live wins this week. And that was SmackDown vs. Raw 2016. And with this, I guess the podcast is now over. So, let's have a look back at some of the best moments from tonight's show. So, uh, how do we break it to Simon that we didn't do anything yesterday? It's no big deal, little man. It's only our first song for him. What's he gonna do? Fire us and have some oversized henchmen throw us out the window? <laughs> yeah. I don't care if it is your first song for me. You're fired! Eugene! Window! <laughs> window. <laughs> ah, memories. Good night, kids. Go read a book. Girl, this is my sorry for 2004, and I ain't gonna mess up no more this year.